TV, Channel 56, Anaheim. Are you ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television. Featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting and award-winning conservative voice of television, Wally George. Thank you very much. You're the most fantastic people. This audience gets better and better every week. And I want to... Uh, hey, listen. How are y'all doing tonight, all right? Can we get... Hey, Hoshi, can we get a, a little shot of those signs? Hold your signs up. I just might do that. Can we... Uh, hey, <laughs> I hope, I hope you're watching, Tom. I'm getting ideas from this audience. I want to say thank you very much to the people in the back who are standing. Bless you for being that patient. I, I'm sorry, but hey, and you people over here, we are going to be getting uh, some more chairs, and we are going to be moving into Anaheim Stadium in about four weeks, okay? <laughs> How about a nice hand from our associate producer, David Kennedy, right here. There he is, David. Can I tell you, we have a show tonight. We have some, uh, a man who represents some of my best friends, one of my favorite organizations, the ACLU. <laughs> Uh, talking to, uh, going to be talking to Jeff Cohen from the ACLU about, oh, he thinks the police are too brutal, and and they're and they're too re they're too repressive. Oh my gosh, we'll talk about that. And then I have Rachel Copeland, who says she's a sex therapist. <laughs> so tired of, I'm so tired of all these experts who are trying to sell a million books by telling everybody that they are sex experts come on I'm gonna find out why she thinks she knows so much about the subject that's what I want to find out now you know what I hope you don't find out while you're oh <laughs> hey I want to show you Okay, hold on. I had Rachel uh, Johnson send me this, and Hoshi, if we can get a picture of this. She's talking about a pornography, Wally. How about this ad about pieces, it's called? And the ad says, you don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre. And here's a picture of a chainsaw about to saw a young woman in half. Now, come on. It, it isn't. Is that sick? When I, when I talk about pornography, it isn't just illicit sex, but this kind of terrorism is just as much pornography, and let's get rid of it. Okay, it's time for my commentary before Arnie Evans has a heart attack. I've already gone in about four minutes. And you know, I wanna tell you something, really, gang. I've been very suspicious of the left-wing National Council of Churches for some time now. And they've been leaning farther and farther to the left year after year. Now, they've made their big move now, and I want to tell you, I am up to here with it. They are now trying to rewrite the Holy Scriptures, trying to rewrite the Bible, saying it is sexist. What do you think about that? Hey, 
Hey, you know what? Hey, they, they say the Bible is against women. Now, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Hey, the feminists, the feminists must be jumping for joy with this one. Now, get this. The National Council of Churches says we cannot say anymore that God is our father. We must now refer to God as our father and mother. Come on. This is ludicrous. These lunatics have no right to change the Bible uh, just because of a whim they may have. They also say, they also say, we, wait a minute. They also say that we cannot refer to Jesus as the Son of God. No. That's sexist. So what they want to do is they want Jesus described as, instead of the Son of God, the human one. He cannot be... Jesus cannot be called the Son of God anymore because it's sexist. Now listen, we all know that Jesus was a man and that makes him the Son of God. Okay, but wait a minute. The National Council of Churches also says that God and Jesus cannot be referred to as Lord. We cannot say the Lord our God. Now God, according to these jerks, and I'm sorry, but they are, now, I'm sorry, we can't call God Lord anymore. We have to call him sovereign. And we can't say the kingdom of heaven because kingdom has male overtones and is also sexist. So we can't say kingdom, we have to say realm. I have, I have news for you members of the National Council of Churches. Listen up, if you will. The people of this country will not stand for you rewriting the holy scriptures. Attention, everybody. Hold on. Attention, everybody, in the National Council of Churches. God is our Father and our Lord, and you are not going to change that. Now, you, you are slapping God, the Father, in the face, and it is a disgrace, and it is a sacrilege, and I just say this, may he, and I say it again, he, may he have mercy on your souls. I'll be right back. <laughs> Where did that come from? Hey, I want to welcome you back. This is Hot Seat. I'm Wally George. And I want you folks at home to make this a weekly date. Saturday night, 11 o'clock. There is nowhere else to go on television. Am I right? Yes! Yeah! Channel, channel 56, 11 o'clock, Saturday night. I want you to go out and bang on the door and tell all your neighbors, okay? Yeah! Before 11. Okay. David, do you have a comment? Well, on your uh, editorial there, Wally, I think the Holy Bible has withstood the test of time for some two to three thousand years. I imagine it'll uh, withstand the onslaughts of the feminist fad of 1983. And the National yeah. Council of Churches. As for the National Council of Churches, I think it ought to be renamed. I'm not about to say here exactly what I think it ought to be, but it's different. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, we're going to go to the podium now, and we're going to get some questions from the audience. Can you state your name and your question, please? Uh, my name is Darren Roach, and I'd like you to express your opinion on why you're against Martin Luther King as a holiday. Why am I against Martin Luther King's birthday being a national yes, holiday? Yes, sir. Okay. I've had a lot of mail about this because I have expressed myself against it. And let me tell you a few reasons why. I'm not the only one. I've had mail saying, you conservatives are all against Martin Luther King uh, having his birthday a national holiday. No way. Let me inform you that the Federal Bureau of Investigation has a file this thick on Martin Luther King for engaging in communist sympathizing throughout his life. And Robert F. Kennedy, a liberal Democrat, my friends, and the former attorney general, 
was so worried about Martin Luther King's left-wing subversive activities that Robert F. Kennedy, as Attorney General, had Martin Luther King's telephone wires tapped. Now that's why I am against, for many other reasons, and also, right. and also there are many other people. You know, we only have one person in this country, one president, President George Washington, who has a national holiday, and even that is now called All Presidents Day. I say Martin Luther King has a lot of questions to answer. Unfortunately, he can't answer them now. But I say Martin Luther King does not deserve a national holiday in his name. There are many more Americans who deserve it a heck of a lot more, and I wonder how you feel about that. <laughs> I think, uh, I think first, Wally, we ought to have a, a Wally George birthday before we... <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. I'm uh, Manuel Lopez, uh, president of the Mexican-American National Organization. I know who you are, Manuel. I, I know that you're an expert on uh, illegal aliens. And previously the president of the Mexican-American Political Association. Uh, Wally, I must say that I've been watching your show. I've been a little bit disappointed because... Uh, you've been overbearing on undocumented people. I have been overbearing? Yes, yes, yes you have. Yes, you have. Have I ever been overbearing? All right. And uh, what, what I'd like to do, aside from asking you a question tonight, I'd like to challenge you to debate um, in the near future. I, All right, hold on. I'm willing to accept that debate. How about two weeks from tonight? That's, per that's you've perfect. You've got it. You've got it. That's perfect, because I, I think it would take more than one question to satisfy me. I, I think that you've, you're ignoring the contributions of the undocumented. You're calling them illegal aliens. Well, well let's not have the, uh, the debate now. You come up here, sit on the hot seat in two weeks, and I'll Very debate good. you. I okay, vote. <laughs> How you doing? I'm John Santana. Yes, John. And Wally, isn't it true that the liberal press have exaggerated the effects of nuclear war? Wait a minute. Okay. Are you taking a screen test or something? No, no. <laughs> I'm just saying what I feel. I'm just I, saying I, what I, I feel. I, I want to know if you're asking a question or if you're auditioning for a party. No, no, I'm asking a question. Okay, go ahead. I, get, I get hot, okay? Okay, go ahead. Okay. They're exaggerating. Are you auditioning for my job? No, oh, okay, no, okay, no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> they, okay. They have exaggerated the effects of nuclear war to weaken our will to use the atomic bomb. The bomb of what I read is just like any other bomb since, since Hiroshima, only right. bigger and better. And I say this, I say if, if a crisis comes, why shouldn't we use it? Didn't we develop it first? And what's the use in having it unless the Soviets know that we'll use it if they get out of line? I say this, are we wimps or cowards that we can't absorb an all-out nuclear attack and still live to win? And I say this. Hold on, hold on. I say this. Hold on. I say this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I say this. I say this. You're through. Next, please. Okay. Okay. Yes, All right. Your name and your question. Hi, I'm Larry. Where did that guy come from, Arnie? I told you to screen those guys. Next, go ahead. Hi, I'm Larry from Tustin. Yes. And uh, last week you had a gentleman on that wanted to legalize drugs. Yes. I just. Uh, wondering why don't you bring up the point that they want to legalize drugs just so they can take them and not get in trouble? Of course, them. but there are many reasons that they want. You see, this this guy that I had on, this creep that I had on the air the other week. I mean, he doesn't want to just legalize drugs. He wants to legalize prostitution. He wants to he wants it so anybody can do anything they want anywhere, anytime. I mean, come on. Are we going to have anarchy in this country? You're absolutely right. Our final question, your yes, Maybe you're Mo from yeah. Justin. And um, what do you think about um, Steve Howell's incident? And if you were the commissioner, would you give him one more chance? I have talked about this before on the show. Steve Howe had two chances, two strikes. He's out. I'll be right back. Okay. Okay. Welcome back to Hot Seat. Now it's time to get to our first guest on the Hot Seat, and David Kennedy, let's introduce him. All right, first up on the Hot Seat tonight, Wally, is a young man by the name of Jeff Cohen of the American Civil Liberties Union. <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, I don't like that. I'm sure you, you appreciated that warm welcome. <laughs> okay. Jeff, you know, 
I want you to know right off the bat, I don't know if you, if you know this about me, but I have been on the air here for many years in Los Angeles, formerly with uh, Mayor Sam Yorty. I remember that. Yeah, and I have never been a fan of the American Civil Liberties Union. Do you know that, Jeff? I've noticed that, yes. You have noticed that, okay. Good. But see, now the eight... ACLU doesn't mind the jeers because we like a free speech, a lot of exchange of ideas, oh, disapproval, yeah. approval. As so long as it's for the liberals, me. you know. No, for all, okay. all points of view. Now listen, what I want to ask you though, in recent, in recent months now, you people have really been taking on our Los Angeles Police Department. The, I, I am so tired of hearing about police repression, police brutality, uh, the police spying on people. Why do you want to handcuff the police department from catching criminals? I would have thought that you would know uh, American history and American tradition because you talk about the voice of Americanism and the voice of patriotism. In America, in a democracy, the police doesn't spy, isn't supposed to spy on people just because of their political views. That's what we fought, found through this lawsuit. That's why we're going to court December 5th to try to stop the spying. We want the police to catch the criminals. We don't want them to spy on the ACLU. We don't want them to spy on the Alliance for Survival. You had an, a guest on your show a little while back from the Alliance for Survival. You didn't agree with half of what he said, but why should he be spied on? I didn't agree on? with anything that All right, he said. why should he be spied on just because you don't wait agree how or are, Chief Gates doesn't how, agree? How are the police going to ever catch a criminal if they wait till the crime is committed before they make an arrest? How are oh. they... The police. When you talk about spying, what it really is is per police surveillance. No. You say that no matter what a person does in the privacy of his home, that's his business, right? No, I'm talking about the issue of police sending undercover officers into political groups because they have progressive or liberal or radical political beliefs. They may have subversive beliefs. Did you ever think about that? We're, we're not interested in their beliefs. We're interested in whether they're committing crimes. Do you if know, they're committing crimes, arrest them. If they're not, don't spy on them. Do you know, Jeff, that we're going to have the Olympics here next year? Right, I certainly do. And the police right now is very worried about terrorism. Then maybe what they should do is start looking at criminals and terrorists and quit spying on the ACLU, the Alliance for Survival, the Coalition Against Police Abuse, and all the groups that they've been spying on. Let them look at the criminals and terrorists. How about you? How about you stopping the handcuffing of, We're of the police? Handcuffing you police. Don't... We're handcuffing the spies. Oh, we don't want the on. spies to be in our midst. Come on. Spying. It is not spying. It is surveillance. Now listen. Now, you guys have been against uh, the police infiltrating schools and other, I mean, looking for dope pushers. You've even been against saying it's unconstitutional, an invasion of privacy for dogs to be brought in to sniff out dope in lockers in schools. Now, wait a minute. You are always in favor of the rights of the criminals, but you're never in favor of the rights of the victims. And that's what I'm saying. Why is it? Why is it? No, just answer me this. Why is it, Jeff, you always are saying the rights of the criminals must be protected. We are talking about the protected. rights of the criminals. I'm talking about the rights of political activists to go about their business of meetings, having peaceful demonstrations without the undercover officers in their midst. I'm not talking about criminals. You know who I mentioned. I mentioned the ACLU. I could list all of our plaintiffs. Well, they aren't criminals. Something? They're political people. Let the cops look at the criminals and let the political people, whether they're right, left, or center, go about the business of American democracy. You know, you know, Jeff, you know very well the reasons some of these political organizations are being investigated because you know and I know that there are subversive people in this organization who want to overthrow this government. One of your, one of your ardent supporters, one of your ardent supporters, Jane Fonda, said publicly, and I can quote her, hold on, I can quote her, Jeff. She said, if you really knew, if you really knew communism, you would get down on your knees and pray that one day we would have a communist form of government. Do you believe that, Jeff? When was that said? It was said over 10 years ago during right, the Vietnam over, War. Over 10 years ago, and now is she the wife of an assemblyman? That's right, and I'm she awfully the, sorry that he is, is an assemblyman. She is the wife of an assemblyman. She is working within the system. Why should she be spied on? You're avoiding on? my question. Wait, you're avoiding my question. Do you, do you agree with what she said? One day... I don't see what it has to do with police spying, but no, I don't agree with the statement, if it answers your question. Now let's talk about police spying. 
because we're tired of undercover officers with the crime rate mushrooming that they're looking at political activists instead of criminals. You're worried about the Olympics coming up? I'm worried about the Olympics. Maybe they should start looking at criminals and terrorists and get out of the ACLU. Get out of the coalition against police abuse. Get out of the Alliance for Survival. Get out of the Friends of Ron Burkholder. Don't keep sending undercover officers into the Citizens Commission on Police Repression. Let those groups speak what they want to speak, even if it's controversial. Listen, the thing that I am trying to say to you, why is it that the American Civil Liberty always attacks the police department? Who are you going to turn to the when there is The ACLU, as you well know, has defended police officers and is doing so in Orange County right now. What police officers have you defended? The police officers that have been discriminated against by race. The ACLU has taken those cases, and you know it. The, what I, we're all, talking about is not defending criminals, but defending the rights of political activists to speak their minds within the system, and if they're not committing a crime, then get the undercover officers listen, out of the group so they can catch the criminals you're talking about catching. All right, Chief Darrell Gates will tell you the people that he, has in, that he is investigating and spying on are people that he has reason to believe are subversive and dangerous and to this country. And we have the files. I'll tell you something, Jeff. Wait, no, 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 let me tell you something. You're always saying the police has to stay out of everybody's business and these organizations like right. the ACLU. Right. Well, right. I say baloney because it, it's organizations like the ACLU who are a danger to the United States of America. So, and you, and you, Wally George. And you know and why you, I say that? And you, Wally George, because you think they're a danger, then the cops should go in and infiltrate them. What if I say that you're a danger? Should the cops go I, in? I am. Hold on. Here's where... Here's where you... Here's... Here's where you and I differ. Oh, I am perfectly to willing to have them. Well, then you're not a good American. Me, but you may have. Oh. Hey, hold on. Oh. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me get wait it. a minute. Hold on. If you were a good American, you'd be against spying, whether it's in Russia or the United States. You'd wait be against spying you anywhere in the world. You may have. Russia you may ha the US. have something to hide. I don't. I've got nothing to hide, but I'm against spying whether the Russian KGB is doing it or the American CIA is doing it. And I'll tell you what else it. you're against. You're against the death penalty. You're against, you're against the loyalty oath. You're against the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. You're, you're, against, you're against prayer in school. And you are against the Victim's Bill of Rights. Isn't that correct? Well, I understand that your guest next week is going to be the Associate Director of the ACLU. That's right. Uh, why don't you raise those issues with her, because she certainly will answer you point by point. I thought we were going to discuss police spying. We, have poli we are discussing police Let's spying. Let's keep discussing it, because I don't really think that you've made a good point yet, and I'm waiting for you to begin. Oh, is that right? Okay. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, aren't you aware? that uh, these so-called peaceful left-wing political groups are where the terrorists are spawned. And if the police are not able to go in there and find out where this uh, thing is starting, how are they going to catch these all, people? All we, are suggesting, all, we, all we are suggesting is if they have any probable suspicion, a probable cause of criminal activity, then go into the group. If they just don't like their political advocacy, then you stay out of the group. When you have any reasonable suspicion, if, uh, let me finish. If you have reasonable suspicion, like you say, that there is terrorism being spawned, then uh, the police can investigate the group, well, I, but not we have, we have because of right their now. advocacy. We're going to be back in a minute, but first I want to make this point. The ACLU is against spying, which is really intelligence. I'm saying this, if we're going to stop crime and terrorism in this country, we have got to look into suspicious people before they commit an act of terrorism. attorney for the American Civil Liberties Union and through all this hogwash that you've been hearing from his attorney mouth I want to tell you this that, that he has neglected to say this that the ACLU never ever ever has been in favor of the victim they have always tried to paint the police department out to be brutal repressive spying horrifying individuals I am sick and tired of the attacks 
the ACLU has made on our Los Angeles Police Department and our police chief. You know, Jeff, you, with the aid of our mayor, Tom Bradley, have already destroyed the morale of the Los Angeles Police Department. I have talked to many, many, many police officers. Thank I want you to stop any police officer in Los Angeles and ask them what they think of the ACLU. Yeah, some of them will you tell you that they're tired of being, having their good work discredited by this spy unit and they'd like to get on to the business of stopping criminals. No and way, the, no and way. The, and the police, and the police spy unit, which, Hold the on. police spy unit, public disorder intelligence division, which is now defunct, put out of business because of its abuses. Maybe now they can get on to the business of being involved in crime prevention, and this spy unit is demoralizing them, and I understand that it should. Maybe if they start looking at terrorists instead of political activists, maybe we won't have to worry Can't about that demoralization. Can't you understand that the political activists are the terrorists of oh, tomorrow? Oh, so? Why don't you name them? That's right. Who are they? Now listen. Who are they? Now, now, now listen. Can't you understand this, Jeff? that what the police intelligence is trying to do is to investigate organizations that are suspicious so they can stop acts no, of terrorism no. before they happen. You want to wait until an act of terrorism is committed, until a crime is committed, no. and then you want to I'm send sorry. the police in. I'm sorry, Wally, but we have 8,000 pages of police spying documents. What the documents show is that the police department is looking at people that criticize the department, and then they send it up to the chief of police because they want to keep the chief of police brief as to who his critics are. It's not crime prevention. It's not crime related. It's political spying. Why don't we get to your guest? Well, hey, it's my show. I'll go to the guest. Right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, sis, wait a minute. I'm the one. I'm the one who says when we go to the podium. Right. He's been waiting. It's patiently. not your show yet. Right. I'm not through with you okay. yet. Now, I, I want to ask you this. Why is the ACLU against the Victims' Bill of Rights? Can you ask me that? I'd like you to discuss that in full. Well, are you afraid to discuss it? With our associate director, who you know you're having next week, so we could get on with the issue of police spying. All right, now let's go to the podium, okay? Yes. Okay. I have something that's to be directed towards your guest Quiet, here. Quiet, please. It's not so much a question, but it's more an incident. It's a particular example. Reverend Jones was a sick person who, for some reason, was not investigated well enough and because of that a lot of people died that didn't have to die and that's all there is to it that's uh, all and he might have and it if, might if, may possibly have been stopped and people wasn't. you see here's the point can people I, can I answer yeah that? as soon as i make a point <laughs> people like mr cohen would not like to have people like Jim Jones investigated because it's an invasion of his privacy. No, the real answer to that is if you looked in uh, Wednesday's Los Angeles Times, you would have seen a headline story about an undercover officer named David Bryant. David Bryant infiltrated uh, the Black Student Union at LA City College, the Coalition Against Police Abuse, the South Africa Support Committee, the South Southern California chapter of the Black Panther Party, the Anthony Brown Justice Committee. He went to NAACP meetings. He went to SCLC meetings. And then you find buried in these, buried in his nearly a thousand pages of report, a reference to an event he was at that Jim Jones was the speaker at. And lo and behold, this police undercover officer writes a memo about Jim Jones about how whites and blacks seem to get together so well at this event. And Jim well, Jones was well received. Right, the on, point is, up here. my point is, if they were not assigned you. to lawful groups like the ones I named, maybe they could look at the criminals. You. But get them, quit assigning them to the lawful you political one, groups. You had one police officer investigating how many groups? How can yeah, one he went man from, do a thorough job yeah. on right when he's covering that much ground? What he's doing? Okay, let me ask you this. What he's, he's doing, okay. what he's, doing is he's undercover in all let of those different this. groups. You are always in. Uh, the ACLU constantly is talking also about police brutality. Why in the world don't you ever talk about the brutality to police? Now, as a perfect example, I had a newsman on my show, and he told me. Uh, a very interesting story, and I, I wish you'd comment on this, how on the left-wing newscasts... I've never seen one. Well, I'll tell you, all the newscasts are left-wing. I've seen moderate liberal there newscasts, were, never right, left-wing. Well, well, then you're not watching. I'm because, watching it every night, because and what I'd, happens I'd like is, to see a left-wing one. What we happens, should have left, right, and center, I believe, in your broadcast. What, what I'm trying to say is, Jeff, what happened is this. When you this have, is the right. When yeah. you have police brutality, the 
the, uh, the TV cameras never ever pick up the kids or the terrorists or the rioters who are tormenting the police officers into retaliating. They only show the brutality of the police then who are retaliating to the attacks of that's terrorists. that's bad reporting. By left-wingers. No, there are no left-wing newscasts. There oh, are, get out there of are here. The, there are the Rockefellers. There are no. no. You have, you Name have me. the there networks that are for the center. You have you, who's commenting from the right wing, but they don't allow left-wingers Do on you TV. Know, we should see more left-wingers on you TV. Know that, that it would be fair. It was printed in the New York Times. 98% of the news media are registered Democrats. Now, get out of here. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And I'd like the to Democrats. Ask, mind? Next question. I'd like to ask uh, a question about the idea of what this country was started on. I'm a patriot, and I feel that the idea of free speech and exchanging ideas and political views, allowing to have political views uh, talked about without fear of repression or fear of spying, it sounds like what we're doing, or the Los Angeles issue, is almost like exactly what the Russians do with their people, and that's called KGB. I agree yeah. with you. KGB, KGB tactics. KGB tactics. Gestapo tactics. What is the difference? What is the difference? There, listen. The the Los Angeles Police Department is trying to stop crime before crime starts. And I don't know what you're. I don't care if the police spy on me. I have nothing to hide. And if the police can stop an act of violence or a crime or a murder or an act of terrorism by intelligence, what in the world is wrong with that? Wally. You've had it. Next question. Wally, I'm shot. Next. Hi, I'm. I'm Bob from Westminster. Yes. I've got four kids in school, and they say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag every day. What does what your group got against the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag? I've got nothing. It's for God, for God and country. I've got nothing against the Pledge of Allegiance. What I do have is when Wally makes a statement, and he says he's a good American, that I don't have any problem with me being spied on if I'm not committing a crime. That is so un-American. We fought a revolution in 1776 for a Bill of Rights for freedoms, for a better way, and that means free speech, competing ideas. And when I hear Wally say, when I hear, when I hear Wally say that he doesn't care if he's spied on, I'm truly shocked. Why not? That's so un-American. I have nothing to hide. You're the one, you want, the, you want to have the people who are trying to overthrow this government be completely free of any police investigation. I'm not concerned about people I'm no, what we're concerned about is people having their right to speak you and speak are, controversial you are ideas. Wait a minute, I, I want to make a point here. I want to make a point. You are concerned about the rights of left-wing liberal subversives no. to take over this country. We'll defend now, the rights of on. anyone whose who's speech just one rights minute. are violated. He asked you about the Pledge of Allegiance. You, and you talk about Carol Sobel, who's going to be on this program. I wonder if she will next week. I had her on this program. No, don't give me the wraparound, because I have a thing to say here. I asked her the last time she was on my program if she would recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. That's the point. And she said she would not. Will you recite the Pledge of what Allegiance? That's the point. Will you recite it with me? Because I, because I, this. Will you recite it? Just answer me. No. Can, Will do you I get to talk? Answer my question. Do I get to talk? Answer my question. Will because, you recite the Pledge of Allegiance? Because I have demolished your ideas in this debate, you're trying to degrade, no degrade the oh I'm trying, I'm trying to point you out for what you are. Will you recite the Pledge? Do you pledge your allegiance? Do you pledge your allegiance to the United States of America? I did throughout school. It's a senseless diversion. Wait, a senseless it's, a, diversion? it's a senseless diversion of a discussion we're having on police spying. I just want to know, will you right now recite with me the Pledge me? of Allegiance to our mean, flag? Do you mean to degrade the traditions of this country by compelling by compelling someone to pledge the allegiance when you want him to pledge it? I'm, that is so... I'm, I'm, that, 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 I'm asking you. Is hold so on. Degrading no, it isn't. To the American no, it isn't. I'm, that I am appalled that you would even wait ask a minute. me. I am asking you. Wait a minute. Hold on. You're not going to get off the hook. I'm I am off the hook I'm because you have you. degraded the American flag I am, by saying that you're going to compel me or try to humiliate no, me. No. That I'm, I either say the pledge right now or, or, or somehow. 
somehow I'm un American. Hold you on. have degraded the American flag. I am flag. asking you. You once are not more. asking me. I, You're trying to no, with I, your Yahooers here. Now, wait a minute. You humiliate me, and, and I will not be humiliated. You know, I will I not really, be humiliated. I really, I really punched the right nerve, didn't I? I yeah, punched yeah. the right button. I'm going to very calmly, you hold sure on. Did. I'm Let's going to go. very calmly ask you, not compel you, I'm going to ask you, will you recite the Pledge of Allegiance am, to our flag? And I am going to very calmly say that in the degraded way that you have raised this issue of the American flag, I am going to say no, and I'm going to say it as patriotically as you have ever uttered a breath or uttered a word. I am going to say it with as much patriotism. So you, you refuse to recite the, all right. You have taken up the last five minutes with this degradation ritual, degrading that red, white, and blue behind you. You are the I one, would like you are the one who has done it. I think, hold on. I think, ladies and gentlemen, I think, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the reason I have taken so much time is I wanted to see how long he would take to squirm off the hook to avoid reciting the yeah, Pledge of Allegiance uh, to the United States of America. Now you see him with the kind of American he is. I've seen enough. We'll be right back. I want to tell you something. I just want you to know this is the kind of idiots that are on the American Civil Liberties Union. And I'll tell you, you know, this man is an attorney, so he used every bit of his experience on how to wiggle off the hook. Now, that's why I spent a good five minutes trying to see how many ways he would go around to tell me that he would not, re not recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. Now, we mentioned that next week, Carol Sobel, the director of the ACLU, is going to be on this program. You watch this program oh, next week. Cool. I doubt very much you're going to see her sitting there. You know why? Because I had Carol Sobel on my program about two years ago. And I asked her the same thing I asked Jeff Cohen. Carol would you recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America? And her answer to me was, that's ridiculous. It's only a piece of cloth. Oh. That's, and that's the, uh, that's the woman that this man, Jeff Cohen, works for. And then I said, okay, I'll let that pass, Carol. But as the Southern California president of the American Civil Liberties Union, will you then pledge your allegiance to this country, and she refused to do so. Now, if, if she has the guts, if she has the guts to come down and sit in this hot seat next week, she's scheduled to be here. I doubt she has the guts now to do it. Because Carol, if you're watching, if you're watching, I'm gonna ask you those same questions again. And I'm gonna also ask you why you refuse to answer when I said to you, do you believe there is a God. And she refused to answer that. Now she said, she says, she told me that was irrelevant. That's baloney. The ACLU is the American Civil Liberties Union. They are supposed to protect the civil liberties of all of us. But you know and I know the only civil liberties that they're after to protect are the criminals. They couldn't give a damn about the victims. And they are out to promote freedom of speech and freedom from spying for terrorists and would-be terrorists and subversives. That's why they're attacking the LAPD on terrorism and spying on terrorists, because they don't want these people to be uncovered. Anyway, enough said. I dare you, Carol Sobel, to come on the hot seat next week. Okay. Okay, David, let's get to our next guest. All right, next up on the hot seat tonight, Wally, is Dr. Rachel Copeland, who believes women are better than men. Uh, so wait a minute. It doesn't say in what way. Wait a minute. Rachel, why are you applauding yourself there? All right, let's start this off on the right note. 
We just had Jeff Cohen from the ACLU. Hold on. Quiet down, please, out there, everybody. We just had the ACLU on talking about the Pledge of Allegiance. You, you don't mind pledging your allegiance to your country, do you? No, what's the difference? Just as simple yeah, as that, sure. right? Why not? I wonder why he couldn't do that. Okay. Now, That's his problem. Now, it, it, now we're going to get to your problem. <laughs> You and a million other so-called sex therapists are writing these crummy books telling everybody how to improve their sex lives. What makes you such an expert on sex? I mean, you know, you know darn well that the main thing you're trying to do, Rachel, is make as many bucks as you can off a lot of poor suckers who maybe maybe are, are, are not doing too well in their social lives. What makes you, what qualifies you as what qualifies you as a sex expert? Well, for one thing, I've been a practicing sex therapist for about 18 years. Are you a doctor? Yes, I have a doctorate in psychology. And the reason that there are so many sex therapists now is that there are so many people like you. <laughs> Are you, are you trying to uh, attack my sex life? Well, I haven't tried you, you know, so I, I'm not attacking you. Well, what do you mean you. by that statement? For I people won't... like like me, what yes. are people like like me? How would there you? There are people. All right, hold on. You, Let you're me say, a, answer your question. All right, hold on a minute. Okay. You're a psychologist. Analyze me. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. I'd love to. There are many people who are very bitter and angry and they're shouting and they're hollering and they're carrying on because underneath they lack that intimate loving relationship <laughs> just say something. They get all uptight because they need a little loving, you know. Now, I want to tell you something, Rachel. There are, they need, television needs a few people like me who will not let scum you come on television. Wait a minute, Rachel. Okay. There are too many people, there are too many talk show hosts who just sit back like Mamby Pamby, uh, God knows what, who will let their guests say anything, run their country down, run the police down, run the okay. president down, run the flag down. I may shout and scream, but you have to shout and scream to I, get these scum okay. exposed for what they are. I'm, I'm for it. I'm for controversy. I'm for conflict. And we'll find out, what else, you're as, for. We'll find out what else you're for after we come back from these messages. <laughs> Our studio audience we tape here every Wednesday evening if you'd like to uh, arrange for tickets all you have to do is call the numbers on your screen 714 area code call 999-5000 999-5000 and the 213 area code you call 464-6111 464-6111 leave us your name and your telephone number and how many seats you want and we'll get to you and get you down here at a future tape you want to have you in our studio audience or write to hot seat box 56 tv Anaheim, California, 92803. Now, Rachel Copeland, as time permits, David, do you have a question? Well, okay. yes, uh, Rachel. This sex therapy thing is a relatively new art in the last 15, 20 years. Without all that help, how do you think the millions of people my age got here? Yeah. Well, we're not talking about sex therapy to teach people how to have babies. That's simply procreation. Any animal can do that. We're talking about sex for love. For love. And I'd like to invite the people to come down and hear me really go into this. November 1st at the L.A. Well, here Press comes the Club. plug. Why not? Uh, all right, Why give, not? It, give the plug. Where's it going to okay, be? Okay, it's at the L.A. Press Club. November? November 1st on Tuesday. And everybody can come at 7.30 and you'll hear me really tell you the facts of life. We'll be there. Okay. Hey, guess what, Rachel? Hey, guess what, Rachel? What? I I'm not coming. You're going to be there? I'm not coming, no. Oh, just hey, the one who needs it. Hey, I want to ask you this. Hey, Rachel, you can find it over here. Okay. I want to ask you this. You yes. said... You have said many times that you think women are better than men. How can you say that? Well, it depends on 
who is asking the better well i'm asking the better. question do you think women are better than men in many ways if women no. ran this world let me just we'd be in a that. heck of a shape we wouldn't have <laughs> we wouldn't have wars we wouldn't have murders 70% oh, of all the murders in the world are committed by men, and you know why? They don't have good sex. You know why? Oh. They don't have good sex. Well, well, folks. Well, she just sold another, she just sold another 200,000 copies of her book. All right, all right, let's give it another plug as long as she... Now, now you're also talking on your, in your book about unisex now what the heck is this unisex do you believe in that well if you ever took your clothes off and you stood in front of a mirror you would see that you're unisexual that you have two little nipples left over from when hey, this is a family show we're doing here yes. you know? as a matter of fact every human being and every animal has evidence of both sexes having existed in the in the one body in the unisex at some point in history we don't have enough time to do a real investigation of this tonight because it would take a couple hours to go into it but the newest research on sex is that every man has the vestigial organs of a woman you're sitting there and you have a little womb and ovaries <laughs> Bring, bring Jeff Cohen back and talk to him for a while. <laughs> I mean, come on. I don't want to hear this kind of talk. It's true, though. It's true. All right. I want to see. Here's what some else? of the things that you mentioned in, in your book here. Our imp impotency and frigidity, are they say it. natural in the human species? Answer that. They're not natural. They're part of the stress pattern that people like you stress other people and they get so uptight they have can't I stressed have sex. You, Rachel? Have I stressed Not you? Not me, because I really like you underneath all the... You just don't know him, Rachel. I know him. <laughs> I want to tell you, I think... You <laughs> know, devil! I want to I want to I think all of... Hold on, gang. I think all of these uh, sex therapy books are a bunch of baloney. I think everybody knows what they're doing and how to do it, and we don't need to try to do it. Look, you can go out and buy her book. You won't find me wasting my money. Now listen, tune us in next week. I wonder if Carol Sobel is gonna have the guts to come down here after what we just talked about. Tune in and find out. Until then, see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Security for Mr. George, provided by Bond International Security of Anaheim. The opinions expressed by Wally George and his guests do not necessarily reflect the views of Channel 56 or its sponsors.